Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode focusing on The Legend of Zelda for Wii U. In this episode, we will be joined by Conrad of Commonwealth Realm while we discuss the different swords, shields, and combat mechanics from past Zelda games, how they can be brought to Zelda Wii U, and how Nintendo may be looking at other games that are similar to the Zelda series for inspiration to influence the development of Zelda Wii U and make it into what they are calling the Ultimate Zelda Game. Everyone knows the Zelda series relies heavily on sword combat and in each game we are given several different equipable swords. Some come with their own unique attributes such as dealing more damage, having a longer reach, shooting energy beams and much more. Everyone is familiar with more popular swords such as the Master Sword, the Double Helix Sword and the Razor Sword, but you may be surprised to learn that the Zelda series features over 30 different swords, all with their own unique properties, uses and stories. Many of the games within the franchise have featured several different obtainable swords, with some of them even having several upgrades. Most prominently, the different stages of the Master Sword within Scarlet Sword, upgrading the Master Sword to the Golden Sword within A Link to the Past, and Majora's Mask allows us to upgrade the original Kokiri Sword, found within A Green of Time, into the Razor Sword, and once again into the Gilded Sword. Some games within the series give us secondary swords as well. Some replaced our primary B slot used for our main sword, and some took the place of a secondary slot such as the Great Fairy Sword being equipped alongside the main sword in Majora's Mask by taking up a C item slot. Usually these alternative swords require a trading sequence of sorts. In Ocarina of Time, we can acquire the Giant's Knife, which is easily broken, but is the first step in getting the more powerful Big Garon Sword which we are forced to use without a shield. In Majora's Mask, we are rewarded with the Great Fairy Sword for gathering all of the Great Fairies within the Stone Tower Temple. Many other primary and secondary swords make appearances as well, but to go over all of them and what makes them unique compared to other swords would take hours. After the release of Skyward Sword, Nintendo mentioned in several interviews that they were looking at other games for inspiration. Most notably, Skyrim was mentioned several times for its open world concept. We can clearly see the inspiration found within Zelda Wii U's vast open world, but what's another game that was released around Nintendo's last home console Zelda title? The Wind Waker. That's right, as we mentioned in my video, Wind Waker HD and Assassin's Creed Black Flag were both released around the same time in 2013. Ubisoft's developers who worked on Black Flag have even stated in several interviews how they drew inspiration from Wind Waker on the GameCube. It may be possible that Nintendo has also looked at Black Flag for inspiration in the same way that they were inspired by Skyrim. And in this case, what could they borrow from Black Flag though? Well, Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Skyrim have a very unique weapon and combat system that Nintendo could learn from and apply to Zelda Wii U to make a unique experience for its players. A few similarities can already be seen. If we take a look at Wind Waker and Assassin's Creed, you will see advantages in waiting for your enemy to attack first and then a counter-attacking later. This is even more crucial when fighting a Dark Nut, as they can't be beaten without the use of a special counter technique. Twilight Princess expended upon this by giving us several different special techniques we could learn from. However, we aren't required to use or learn all of them. In Skyward Sword, the combat system was evolved even further for the use of motion controls. While some fans welcomed the new mechanic with open arms, it ruined the game for many fans. Now, moving back to the similarities between the Wind Waker and Black Flag that can be expanded upon in Zelda Wii U, in both games, you can attack and board enemy ships. Within Wind Waker, if you destroy all the enemies on board the ship, you will be rewarded by a chest appearing. In a similar way, we see various watchtowers while sailing on the Great Sea that are full of enemies and defeating them often reveal a chest as well. With such a huge map, I believe these towers may be used in similar ways to the Assassin's Creed games. The rarity of swords and locations to where they found. In Assassin's Creed Black Flag, certain swords can only be found after completing certain quests, such as the Sword of Altair, which requires completing all of the Assassin Guild challenges. Similarly, to receive the Big Goron Sword, we must completely a rather lengthy quest or side quest as well. The Zelda series features several swords that are unique to certain areas within the games. For example, if you look at the curved blade wielded by the Gerudo, the small Kokiri sword cherished by the Kokiris, the sword Link is given in Orden Village to take to the royal family in Twilight Princess, the Picori blade which was created by the Minish, the Big Goron sword and Giant's knife which were crafted by the Gorons, and many more. 
Zelda series has many swords that have their own background and are unique to certain areas from the Zelda series. Perhaps Nintendo could expand upon this in Zelda Wii U. Imagine coming across a new type of fire enemy and your normal sword is weak against it. So in order to beat it easily, you have to visit the Zorus for a special sword with water damage. From the sword, maybe a spell such as Dense Fire or the medallions found within A Link to the Past that we can use to enchant our sword within the game to fend off certain enemies. This could work for other enemies as well. Getting sword or items to enchant the sword with light, fire, ice or other magical properties. We saw something similar to this within Phantom Hourglass. In this game we were given special magic by the great fairies to give our sword different properties. In fact, in almost every Zelda game we are given the opportunity to upgrade Link's swords. Especially in the more recent games where it has been a more integral part of the story. One last thing I would like to touch upon before moving on to shields. The Zelda series has featured the ability to use an enemy's weapon against them. This was first introduced in the Wind Waker and was made a priority to defeat a certain boss in Skyward Sword. This is also how we received the ball and chain in Twilight Princess. Nintendo should expand upon this in Zelda for Wii U and allow us to keep even more weapons from enemies within the game and not limit us to just swords, but maybe other items as well. It's a great feature from past Zelda games and just needs to be expanded upon in Zelda Wii U. On top of all the different types of swords we may be able to acquire in Link's new adventure and the attributes that we may be able to add to the swords, this leaves an endless amount of possibilities for sword compact gameplay. I touched on this earlier with the counter-attack function shared between the games, but in Twilight Princess we were given much more. We were given several different techniques that were all just optional and could have been simply overlooked by many players. In Wind Waker and Skyward Sword we see NPCs dedicated to only training Link in combat. Wouldn't it be interesting if Nintendo brought this mechanic back for Zelda Wii U and expanded upon it even more? Conrad, we've been going on and on about swords and the new ways they could be implemented in Zelda Wii U, but what about shields? Well, even more so than swords, the shields have become more advanced and expanded upon within the Zelda series. If we look at Ocarina of Time, we were given the Deku Shield, which could catch fire and be equipped with the Kokiri Sword. The Highland Shield, which couldn't be held by Child Link and only by Adult Link. Then we have the Mirror Shield, which reflects light and certain types of magic, but can only be held by Adult Link. If we skip to Skyward Sword, we can see this heavily expanded upon, where they were given different strengths and weaknesses. Some were sturdier and could take more damage than others, but you may end up taking unintentional damage if you used it on the wrong type of enemy. This gave even more of an importance to the Highland Shield, which is given to you in the later part and story of the game, and you have to obtain it yourself. A major feature that should make a return from past games in Zelda Wii U are crafting mechanics. In Skyward Sword specifically, we were given the three different shields to upgrade using various materials from different locations, and each shield had its own unique property. In Nintendo's last original Zelda title, A Link Between Worlds, items such as Master Sword were required for up upgrading the sword. This will be an excellent addition to Zelda Wii U. If this upgrading mechanic is expanded upon and we are required to find very specific materials to upgrade our weapons and shields, then it will truly make for a more extensive and ultimate crafting experience in what has been promised to be the ultimate Zelda game. If we look at the shield Link has in the footage we've seen, it resembles the shields from Skyward Sword very closely. Could this mean the RPG and upgradable elements of Skyward Sword are going to make a return? If Nintendo wants to live up to their quote of making this Zelda game the ultimate Zelda game, then they have no choice but to expend upon the system used in Skyward Sword. They will have to find a great middle ground though. They shouldn't make it mandatory to level the shields and swords all the way up, but make it rewarding. If players feel forced to grind through Hyrule Field for certain upgrade materials, they will get bored and the game will feel repetitive for them, so they need to implement it in a way to make all players happy. If Nintendo brought back the sword and shield elements that we loved from past games and used that as a base to build upon in Zelda Wii U, then the upgrade system, magical abilities, possible energy beams, possible use of medallions, possible special techniques learned within the game like the teachers from Wind Waker's Scarlet Sword, different upgradable shields, the ability to shove or stun enemies with a shield found within Scarlet Sword will be all combined and expanded upon. 
This could make Zelda Wii U uh, have a very unique and most importantly fun battle system and mechanic. We won't be simply mashing B constantly to kill an enemy, and we won't be f flapping our arms around trying to strike the right spot through motion controls. However, Link is right-handed in all of the footage we have seen so far, so maybe we will see the return of motion controls in Zelda Wii U after all. Nintendo will just have to make it optional and not mandatory. This way it will be available for the people who enjoy the motion controls in Scout Sword while giving people who prefer the classic controls to play it a traditional way. We just have to remember that Nintendo is delaying the game to add in different and new ideas to make it the ultimate Zelda game. I believe to make this ultimate Zelda game happen, they must bring back and feature all of the past gameplay mechanics that made sword combat so fun and improve upon it in Zelda Wii U. And Conrad, thank you so much for joining me on this episode and allowing me to be a part of your episode of Zelda Unknown Deadly Waters that focuses on the possible sea exploration and many different water locations we see on the official Zelda Wii U map. It was a pleasure to be here, Jess. And don't forget to like, share, comment under this video. And if you really enjoyed this video, then I highly recommend you subscribe to Game Over Jess for more Zelda Wii U news and theory videos. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and Commonwealth Realms channel for more Zelda content.